Hallelujah. You can please rise. But as we say together the welcoming prayer, join with me in saying, Holy Spirit living within us, guide our hearts and minds to welcome today all those who worship at St. Mark's. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcome in the spirit of love. Help us to recognize the person and individual sent by you who enrich our lives. And most of all, God, let us be a place of love and acceptance for all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask the young people to follow the cross and Julia as they go to their Sunday school lessons. So they proposed to Joseph, called Marsalis, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know our little heart. Show us which one of you, which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, which Jesus turned aside to go to his own place. And they passed lot to him, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 1 is appointed for today. You shall be reading alternatively by my culture, by my verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the council of the wicked, nor have they ever given their lives to the verse. Nor sat the seats of the Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do so God. It is not so in the wicked. They are like a trap. Therefore, Wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the house of the righteous. For 
the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is A reading from the first letter of John. It's John chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that the Spirit has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar. By, believing in it, by not believing in the testimony of God that's given concerning the Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has son, the Son in his life, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. So you may know that you can have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. God. We're going to remain seated and lay that in light that will bless us with understanding.
the Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours. Yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. The world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. So 
ascending to that perfect place when they call it heaven. What can take us there? First, that's my question. We're going to come back to that again. But think about that. What is heaven for you? Where is it? Is it a physical location? However, you answer that for yourself, I would venture to say that it is grace and redemption that ultimately leads us there, or even more powerful, leads us to hope. Today, I'm going to ask us all to be witnesses to the grace and redemption that is offered to us. If only we can stop and see the various moments in which we live. We're too often rushing, 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 instead of absorbing the moment in which we are. It's not easy. You and I live in a dramatic tension between both having the presence and absence of God. The Spirit of God is here, no doubt. And we will be celebrating that next Sunday. We'll be wearing red and we'll be talking about speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, our Lord, who we call the Son of God, is no longer here on this earth. This past Thursday, we recognized him being lifted recently up to heaven 40 days after Easter. This is encapsulated in the church holiday known as Ascension. We conducted the service right over here to my right, along that altar. We had a lovely crowd of two. <laughs> Ryan was there, I was there, Norm was there, we were supposed to be there, and we had two other people who came in. Um, and Mary Moran is extremely thankful to be out. And our own Ed Abdale, who has just successfully won the cataract surgery, he said he had felt it's important for me to be here. That thank God that you. Norm spoke uh, quite strongly about the dichotomies that we face in the ascension commemoration. The holiday itself provides us with spiritual truths. Which is separate and apart from historical facts. And that's always the tension. Historical facts versus spiritual truths. It is spiritual truths that you and I are both brave and perhaps foolish enough to pursue. That's why many of us are here now or perhaps even watching online. The story of the early church and its growth is written in the book of Acts, the reading that Mike brought to us. I often mention they were better known as Jewish Christians. That's probably a term that historians would give me. But that then, the early church called itself the way. As witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection, the apostles and disciples followed the way that Jesus had taught them. They engaged in service with one another, living in the kingdom of God. He was physically gone. And their great hope, our great hope, has been delayed. So we need to determine how to go beyond our mortal sight and raise our hearts to reach God's plan. The book of Acts and our first reading gets into the specifics of how the church was set up. If you want to read a history of the church, read through the book of Acts. In particular, they were facing the crisis on this day. They, uh, due to Jesus, Judas's defection. They had only 11 apostles. They needed 12. Why 12? Go to Norman Bible class tomorrow, Monday. <laughs> now, from what I understand, the 12 apostles represented the 12 lost tribes of Israel, and 12 was the magic number. So, our first reading goes back to the specifics about how Matthias was selected. Back in February, February 24th, to be exact, we have a piece of Mateus worship service here on this day, on this that very day, February 24th, November. But that's okay. I'm not here to talk about facts, historical or current, but to try and get us to consider spiritual truths. I gotta tell you, though, it's difficult to simply feel that we must be old Bible stories and theological points and communicate. How this idea of ascension relates to me in my situation right now. All right, how does this thing in this book worry and concern?
concern me. It has nothing to do with it. Well, that's somehow the idea. Therefore, I'm going to call your attention to a collection of short stories titled Different Seasons, Hope the Springs of Term. It was published in 1982 by an author you probably know, a guy named Stephen King. I'm giving a nod to the yep. uh, Ryan. Yep. In that collection, there's one novella titled Rita Hayward and Shawshank Redemption. We made the movie 12 years later, 1994, and it can be seen quite regularly on TV. Um, I think it's TNT or TBS, it often shows it. You can always stream it. And it had a lot of nominations. It didn't win as much because it was up against Forest Hill. Forest Hill for all the all the awards that it's set in prison throughout much of the 20th century. It was supposed to be in May. It was actually shot in Ohio. The lead character, Andy Frank, is a bad guy who's tried and convicted for the double murder of his wife and her lover, despite his claim of innocence. And he's somewhat of a price figure. He endures abuse, he endures assault, and he introduces his fellow inmates to music. To books and even provides tax services for the guards and the people who work in the prison. The interesting thing is that you see Andy's grace and spirit of humor through the main narrator of the story, Bellamy and Red. And Andy, Andy and Red become friends, they play chess, and they go through the years together. In the film, the character of Red is played by Andy Morgan Green. Red is somewhat cynical. Probably to protect himself. But if you step back and think about what you and I are sitting we are usually sitting with because we're trying to protect ourselves. We don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to get hurt. So it's all out of our back when we make some cynical remark. So, Red and I want to know our citizens. At one point, Andy and Red are on uh, the inmates, are eating in the fridge, and Andy shares his belief in hope. And he's talking about hope. Red cuts him off and he says, Let me tell you. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. So my question this morning, besides where your heaven is, is hope something that helps us? Is hope something that gives you and me sustenance? Or is it something that beats us down? Because what we are sensibly praying for is never delivered in how we expect. The Feast of the Ascension shows us that we can be lifted to another place no matter what prison we are being kept in here on this earth. There are prisons, there are many prisons that you and I put ourselves in. Lack of money, lack of confidence, addiction to drugs, to attention, addiction to sex. You name it. We come up with these prisons, these boxes. To keep us from our full potential. The most important thing is that we have to recognize our prison and then do the work to break free. The perfect example of trying to break free from prison comes from the Shoshan Connection in our narrative. Red is convicted of murder in 1927 and sentenced to life in Shoshan Connection. 20 years later, 1947, he goes before the parole board. The parole hearing official says, we see by your body you serve 20 years to life sentence. Do you feel that you can be a little bit? Red. Oh, yes, sir. I've learned a lesson. I can honestly say I'm changed. I'm no longer a danger to society. That's God's honest truth. Next thing we see on our screen when we're watching a movie, rejected. Ten years later, the parole hearing officer says, It says here you serve 30 years of life sentence. You feel you can be a little bit red? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt. I can honestly say I'm a changed man. No danger to society where God is honest truth. I'm absolutely a little bit. Again, you see, rejected, parole denied. Finally, 40 years later, 1967, red third parole year. Ellis Floyd Bennett, your boss says you've served 40 years of a life sentence. You feel you can be a little bit. Red so scratches his head. Does it be a bill to No. Now let me see. You know, I don't have any idea what that means. The 
parole officer interrupts, well, it means you're ready to join society. I know what you think it means, society. To me, it's just a made-up word, a politician's word, so young fellows like you can wear a suit and tie and have a job. What do you really want to know? Am I sorry that I did it? Well, are you? It's not a day goodbye. I don't feel regret. Not because I'm in here or you think I should. I look back to the way I was a young, stupid kid who committed that terrible crime. I want to try and talk to him. I want to try and stop some sense, tell him the way things are. But I can't. That kid's long gone, and this old man is all that's left. I got to live with that. Rehabilitated? It's just a BS word. So you go on and stand before him, son. Stop wasting your time. Because to tell you the truth, I don't give a life. By this point, Red has come to understand grace. Perhaps because it's a man. And has done his work to get the place of redemption and now understands and accepts the concept of hope. Which previously he thought would just drive a prisoner insane. Ultimately, Red gets parole. And one of the final scenes for the film is he enjoying Andy on a utopian beach in a location in Mexico called Say What the Name. On this Ascension Sunday, I asked him again, I did it again. Where is your Say What the Name? Is it over? Is it here in Fort Lauderdale? Is it Hawaii? Is it New York City? The name, the actual location is the fact, the material. Have you and I done the work towards redemption, accepting that hope is a process in our life? Let me say that again. Hope is a process in our life. Our gospel today is essentially a lightning prayer in which Jesus continues his address to his disciples, encouraging them and us to have confidence and hope in the face of his imminent physical departure, suffering death on the cross. There's a couple of things that many smart biblical scholars talk about, and much smarter than me. They talk about in the world versus the world, being in the world versus not in the world. The other thing they bring up is that the amount of time the Lord read to us the word giving. It is used 13 times. In this, it's used nine times, I would say, in this 13 verse gospel passage. Nine times. Some form of the word give is used. In the whole of John's gospel, 21 chapters, it's used 75 times. I'm not a mathematician, but that's significant. What does it prove? Again, I'll point you to one of the Bible. <laughs> but I do know this for sure. For sure. To truly embrace hope and ascend the honor of any problems, we must give and be thankful in our giving. Never be done any problem. As the Shawshank Convention ends, any right to know, encourage you ready to continue on his journey to accept. I can use a good man to help me get my project on the meals. I'll keep an eye out for you and just for ready. Remember it, remember it. Hope is a good thing. Make the best of things. And no good thing ever happens. Most of May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out with your hand and comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough of foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim you're not Let the church say amen. 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 I'm going to ask if you're able to be stand. And I'm going to turn my back to you and be very traditional.
and face the altar and say the unseen creed and say together, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, all of the seas and unseen. We believe in one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God, the Father, God of God, light of light, true God of God, God of our day, one being the Father, to the Almighty today, for us is our salvation, the day now of heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can take one out of the prayer of heaven and we will take that. For our sake, Jesus, to my God, and my God, who suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, for the Lord Jesus Christ. He ascended to heaven, and sent his prayer to the Father. He will come again and be more righteous than the living dead, and his kingdom will not be held. He will be the living Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life. The father of the son, the father of the son, he has worshipped the Lord. He has spoken with the gods. We can believe in what only Catholic has to say of the church. We acknowledge that baptism is the gift of the church. We look for the resurrection of the air and the life of the world. The prayers of the king. God of light and light, our prayers rise before you this day in hope and faith. We pray, we pray for your church, for our diocese, to the church of the walking. Flame of the land of hope and love. Be our joy in proclaiming your good news to the world. We pray for all who are not today, all who wonder about the faith. And all of our all creation, guide us to be, teach, and nurture your disciples. We pray for those who need the food, shelter, clothing, and all our eyes Comforter of the suffering, warm our hands to loving service. We pray for the world, especially when there is all of suffering. And your steadfast faith. Fuel our passion to challenge injustice and violence and to pursue peace and reconciliation. We pray for the land of the people, 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 the the people, 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 your love will move into our hearts before we live, and our needs will work out. Can you handle your plan with us? And in our prayers and service, we may know your transforming presence and the work of the world for us. All of this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray you now also for the forgiveness of our sins. You may kneel or stand in whatever you put your mind. As we say together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have done, we have not loved you out of our heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are not to be sorry, but we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. 
see a few quick announcements. Um, I guess where I'll start is off script, which is always dangerous. Um, this is a typical St. Mark's weekend. So what I want to point out to you, or at St. Mark's week, in fact, to my left, are um, third grade projects. Uh, all the third graders, they, they actually had them in, the, in both chapters, and the other class was taking it down. And the kids, all third graders, were here in brochures from each of the states in the United States, and they were there presenting. They were where I was standing on Thursday morning, singing to probably about 75 parents, and they, were, they had this rap about the states that I never heard. <laughs> and um, so that is that is over there. I encourage you to go look at those uh, boards. They, they have Virginia, and New York. I was uh, reading them all. I think my daughter's is over there. She did Connecticut. It was sitting in my house for about two weeks. I was gone. And um, so that's one thing. The other thing you'll notice is a circle of chairs right there in front of the prayer books. I was there on Thursday before the Ascension service with the curve band. And many of you know I announced last week about Mr. Kerr being lost at sea, his boat being capsized, long time member here. Um, they came, he spoke to me with all the little prayer service that did in their house. So please keep them in their prayers. Um, they did say to me on Thursday that they went to see the Miami Coast Guard and they're going to be waiting for about two weeks um, prior to getting the death of it. And so please keep them in your prayers. They're going to be a very difficult time. Um, the other thing the other things going on right now is uh, there is a basketball tournament going on in the gym. So people from all over this all over the state are here playing basketball. There is yesterday there was a lacrosse thing going on on our field. And today, one of our members, a former, um, a former uh, vestry member, Lily Griffin, is in the kitchen at the school cooking for a big party that she's throwing this afternoon. She contacted me about two weeks ago and said, hey, Father Jay, you're in the kitchen. I've got a big party in the And so she's there, and all these things are going on at once, and it's a blessing that there's so much activity and such wonderful things that are happening in St. Lawrence. But right here, we're at the hub. We're at the center of what we do in St. Mark's, and that's giving, giving thanks to God. Um, and so I want to thank everyone who's participating. And I believe is someone getting up to talk about pledging. Look at that, Robin. Come on up. Come on, Come on, man. Come on. Come on. The only thing about this is that I really was not going to talk about myself. <laughs> but I do want to tell you about the gift. Uh, first of all, I am a uh, member. St. Mark's since 1997. I sang in the choir until two years ago. Um, during that time, Father Ron and Katie and I started the group for the people that are retired. There was no, no organization of fellowship for people my age. So we started this group and it's been very successful. We started it seven years ago. We meet once a month, the third Thursday of the month, and we have a potluck and uh, meeting the ministry center, which is that building you face when you turn into the parking lot. <laughs> and and, and um, in our meetings, we have a little prayer service, and then we all, we all bring food, we share, and have potluck lunch, and then a speaker. And usually the meeting lasts from 12 to about 2. Anyway, the main purpose is so that we can get to know each other at St. Mark's. 
and um, we've been doing that for seven years. We're going to start it again next September, third Thursday in September. And I hope that anyone interested will let me know and give me your phone number, and I will call you and remind you to go out. Um, that's really essentially what I'm going to talk about. You're welcome. Thank you. Ready? Mine will be brief. I hope by now you know we're in the middle of the stewardship campaign and the church will need to provide some pledge. So there should be pledge cards if you need more bulletin or flag. Put the pledge cards in that lovely gold box. Um, there are, I'm trying to get the church to move me now. But there's all these things you can join to get involved and to know everyone. And if you don't have a coffee cup, I'll put some coffee cups out there. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and just so you know, just quite often what people say is that churches are always, always, you know, begging for money and, and always thinking about money. And and I want you to know a little bit about where the money goes. This past week we spent over twenty thousand dollars, and that was eighteen thousand dollars on hold. It was up right here above the skylight, next to the skylight, and twenty nine hundred dollars. Uh, on a well pump, so that we could, so that the grass could get water, and so that's over there, and that went out just this week. So thank you for your time, treasure, and talent for being part of St. Mark's. Um, welcome back to Elena, who's in her officially in her third trimester. Is that right? She's due in August. Wonderful singer. This is I think her third time here. Thank you for being back. Uh, True Fun Sunday. Oh yes, give her a hat. Fun Sunday, something that started long before I got here, um, and it is an emergency um, source of funds that we collect from you the third Sunday of every month. We see two collection plates there. If you wish to do something for True Fun, please put it, uh, put, put it, I think it's the wooden one. I'm not sure which is correct. But if you the wooden one is True Fun, so the wooden, one, the wooden uh, collection plate is for True Fun. Um, Monday evening, you want to say something about Zoom? Bible study, you want to go to one Bible study. Um, snack bag ministry, um, there are snack bags in the back, and uh, prayers and daughters of the king. There's behind the, once you go see the third grade, behind that is a little box where you can put intentions, uh, whether it's for the Kerr family or we had a family this morning that uh, their wedding anniversary. Uh, it was 51 years ago, and so they, they were here this morning. Uh, so prayers for good or, or, or not, or, or needs, please put them in the, the, our prayer warriors will be praying for you. Uh, I want to thank Julia Torty, who is upstairs with our kids. Somebody's going to have to go and get her a second. Look at that. Look at that. You stuck back. Thank you, uh, thank you for uh, we have one more week of Sunday school. It'll end next Sunday on Pentecost Sunday. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out to you, two things. Um, that we had a meeting with the, the bishop this past um, Thursday, I believe it was. Um, and the, one of the things that we talked about was the new change in CDC guidelines. And I'll essentially give you the cheat sheet. Everything stays the same for the time being. So we're still wearing masks. We're still only giving out one form of communion. We'll ask one person to be our vessel and take the wine. And we don't pass the wine cup. We do contact tracing. We're always uh, cleaning. We're trying to be as safe as possible. There's a regathering team. If you want the longer version, I printed out um, copies that are in the back on one of the on, on one of the uh, stanchions there, and I printed out 15. And so what we should do is throw a nickel into the truth button to see how many of you will actually take it. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not, it's not great reading. It's long. Fred might take it. I don't know. Fred, <laughs> Fred might take it. Uh, anyway, so the, the, the whole guidelines of the regathering team are, are printed back there. But the short answer is we're keeping our masks, we're doing all the protocols that have kept us safe so far, 
and we're trying to continue to do that. The other issue that came up is that we're doing a Juneteenth celebration on June 19th. Juneteenth was a uh, national observance commemorating the uh, announcement of freedom for all slaves. Um, the, the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed in 1863. People living in Texas and parts of the South didn't know they were free for two years. No one told them. And finally, on June 19th, this, pro this letter came out and everyone found out. And June 19th is a day that uh, is celebrated. It was 1997 that it was officially recognized by Congress. The Broward County churches are getting together for a June 19th celebration on Saturday, June 19th, virtually. So they are putting together a service virtually. They want each of our uh, churches to participate. If you're interested in participating, whether it's a prayer, whether it's a reading, whether it's a song, um, talk to me after the service or send me an email and we'll try and get you involved in the Juneteenth celebration. Um, I think that's this month. Are there any other uh, announcements for the good of the congregation? Yes, sir. Okay. But I want to give one a plug. This Monday night, the prayer is so fabulous. You know, we pray today for all those coming to faith, those wondering about faith, and those struggling with faith. I think that that's a strive to all. Come to this Monday night so we can make a good start. And I know I can. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Any other announcements? Okay, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed to give than receive. One of the things they teach you at seminary is that people give more money when music is playing. So I think <laughs> Elena is Elena and Mike are going to sing something. Something, I don't know, sing something. And you should give something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
God brings us to that place. He allows us to see him more clearly. Strengthen us in our relationships. Allow us to be in his image. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Bless your thanks to our Lord God. It is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It's right to be good and joyful and all his different things. Thanks to your Father of life. Free of heaven and earth. Through your healing, beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us. That where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We sing together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes to the name of the world. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated or be able to. We give thanks, O God, for the goodness and love that you made known to us in creation, calling and guilt to be your people. In your word, spoken to the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, except that you incarnate the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the of the world, and in him to deliver us from the evil of men's worthy to stand before you, and in him to brought us out of error and the truth, out of sin and the righteousness, out of death and the life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. When he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he took the next gave to him, said, Drink this all, drink this is my blood. One of you covenant, which is shed for you and for many, and for the of sin. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance. Therefore, according to his command, O God, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. When we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to all the Lord of all, presenting to you your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, in the fullness of time and all the subjection of your Christ. And brings that heavenly country there to St. Mark and all your saints. We may have a last marriage with the sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, to you, the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory to you, the Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy name is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed. For us, <laughs> these are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome in the community. Right now, we ask that you deliver them for the community right there from the second. We ask the people in the back to come forward first. Once the row behind you is come, then you come down to center aisle. You exit the things up to exit the side aisles, and one person. Usually takes the wine as a vessel for the entire congregation. I'm going to ask this morning that that would be Denise Hetzel. And Denise, if you come forward and take the wine for everyone that would be fine. Thank you. 
Join me in saying, Almighty God, you bring her to give Look graciously in our church. And so God allows the Lord to choose the record to save our parish. And we can see the faithful pastor who will dare be your people and equip us for our ministry. In Jesus Christ, our right Lord. Our closing hymn is now the end of the crown. Please make sure.
So I want to officially let you know that Norm is here, and I want to thank you publicly for all The most important words I say to you today, the peace of God which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank uh you. -huh.